guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer card game review. And today's game up on the tabletop is Cardtropolis, the superhero game capturing supervillains and acquiring their power for whoever has the most supervillains in captivity based on their power level at the end of the game is the winner. And in your turn, you're basically going to be playing certain actions, whether it be to play a superhero along with potential sidekick cards, or if you want to discard certain cards that you don't need to drop to better cards, or playing special powered actions that will allow you to basically control your opponent's turn or facilitate in taking one of their villains or putting it back. Another interesting thing too is you'll be able to flip over mystery cards and if you're able to solve the mystery on the mystery cards that will let you gather a villain and of course that's what you want to do you'll put them in jail and you're all superheroes obtaining the same objective can you gather the more more superheroes or sorry more super villains than any other player in the game by the time all the super villains have been captured let's find out in the game card tropolis which i'll show you below explain the game for the most part and then we'll come up and i'll give you my review for the game and decide whether you want to pick up this game or not down below link in the description welcome to cardtropolis and i've already set it up for two players and as you can see it's rather easy to set up you're going to be getting different decks of cards there's three different types one is the blue backed cards this is going to be your superheroes your special actions and your sidekicks you'll shuffle this up and deal out each each player four cards unless you're playing a two-player game then you start off with dealing everybody five cards uh, then you're going to go ahead and take all of the super villains so in this this case here you're gonna see the power level five supervillains eights and then twelves set them up into three tiers so these are the bosses and these are probably the least powerful supervillains then you're gonna take these mystery cards here there's three of them their backs are gonna facilitate this style here which is basically the mystery solved on one end and two which will have nothing you'll take these make sure they're on the purple end and you'll go ahead and shuffle these up so you don't know which one is gonna have the mystery solved then place them just like this these are some design custom cards if you don't want to use them or if you want to uh, use them for later go ahead and set them aside and then of course you have reference cards give these to each player so that they will know what they can do on their turn and then begin by the last player to fight crime or any way that you deem necessary for somebody to start the game. They'll go ahead and start by playing cards or a card, depending on the type of cards they're playing, to try and capture villains or discarding and whatnot. And they're gonna go ahead and take a look at their hand. In your hand, you're gonna have three different types of cards. One could be a superhero, like Senior Capitan. One could be a power-up sidekick. And another could be the special cards, which will end your turn as soon as you play it. The ones that say player turn. You can have multiple different types, types of sidekicks. Some of them are gray, which are wild, and others are going to be green or red or, or blue, which are going to facilitate based on the superhero. So in this case, you cannot put a green with a blue superhero to empower them. You must use the same color, but you can use that gray one there. So on your turn, you'll take an action. Do I want to A, use a mystery hero? I flip a mystery hero card. If the crook is revealed, I can capture, or should I go ahead and just capture a level eight villain? I will. I'm gonna go ahead and use Senior Capitan there's no reason to use this power-up sidekick so I'll go ahead and keep him aside and then I'm going to go ahead and choose one of these guys to capture and I'll capture Cyclone Tempest, Tempest putting it over on my side of the board then whenever you play a card you'll discard a card and if you ever have less than a certain amount of cards in your hand which is the base starting which is four you go ahead and draw back up to that amount and end your turn and the next player will get a chance to go and it'll keep going around in a clockwise fashion the game is going to end as soon as all of these super villains have been captured and that is the basic idea of it. Uh, whenever you discard cards, you have to discard three, and it has to relate in triples in some way, whether it be the same type of sidekick, whether it be four orange or blue or red superheroes, or whether it be three special action cards. When you do discard three, so for instance, if I happen to have, let me see if I can find another one in here, this one here and not this card in my hand. If I had a hand like this, and I for some reason wanted to get rid of these three cards, I could do that, discarding them, and then when I do that, I will have the opportunity to not only draw back up to four at the end of my turn, but I can also chance this mystery area here. I can choose one of these, flip it over, and then if I've solved the crime, I can take a super villain of the lowest tier, which is tier one, two, and three, and based on what's available. So in this case, if I were to have succeeded by taking the, ha, nope, <laughs> ha, 
mystery solved, I would get any of these four super villains. If these four didn't exist, I could take one of these guys here. If these guys didn't exist, I'd take one of those there. Another thing to note too is if you happen to flip over on your first attempt, the mystery solved, you actually get to take one tier higher than the base super, super villain tier. So in this case, if I did it just like this and flipped over this one, instead of taking the fives, I could take one of the eights, which can be fairly useful. And discarding is also useful too if you actually want to get a different set of cards in your hand. And then after that, you would be done and the next player would get a chance to go. So in this case, if he actually did manage to score that, he would put this next to him and the next player would then go ahead and choose and play cards. He could play one of these stasis cards or mystery hero. So let's flip a mystery hero card and continue. Another thing to note too is these cards, once the mystery has been solved, you'll take them, you'll reshuffle them, and then you go ahead and place them back down onto the board, allowing players to continue to flip them over. And then at a certain point in the game, there's going to be a certain number of villains next to all the players. And when that happens, that's going to trigger the end of the game. Everybody's going to get a final turn. And then you're going to go ahead and check and see the numbers or the power level associated with all the villains. And whoever has the most, as far as cumulative points go, they are going to be the winner of the game. So in this case, it's very likely to be this guy here. He's got the most amount of points, so he is clearly the winner. Well, this player did a measly second place. He didn't capture enough important villains to make it count. In the game Cardtropolis, pretty simple, pretty stri straightforward style card game. With a little bit of take that, a little bit of number crunching and mathematics involved in it. Okay, let's come up and discuss the game. Let's discuss my review for the game card, Tropolis. Now, the first thing to note is this game is a card game. It's a pretty simple standard card game that plays for young kids and older, so six and up, and it plays two to five players, so pretty much any of your kids will be able to play over the age of six. The amount of math that is required is not too extreme, but it's a good amount for younger kids to learn, and then also the strategy is there for adults as well, so determining what type of sidekicks you want to have in your hand based on your heroes, whether you want to keep those specific heroes based on what villains are available to you, knowing that you want to get the highest villains you can will determine whether you want to use certain special abilities or whether you want to go ahead and save all of your superheroes and play them as best as you can. Now, of course, there are, I didn't talk about a whole lot of the different abilities or specials, so I'll go ahead and talk about a couple of them. Escape Hatch. Play another player's supervillain card, or put another player's superhero villain card back into the play area. Really good, really powerful. That is a really powerful card. I think there's only one or two of those in there. Body Swap, swap one of your villains with another villain from another player. Or maybe you're gonna use Aces Wild. Swap Aces Wild with any card in the discard deck. and player can use that new card in the same turn. Oof, I like that. I like that quite a bit. And let's see, let's see, uh, uh, escape hatch. Yeah, yeah, we got that one already. And mystery, oh, flip a mystery hero, which is the one we talked about already, one of those mystery, three mystery cards. Uh, if you can reveal the mystery solved, you can get a free villain. And so there are certain cards, obviously the specials, that are very useful to you and will allow you to gather certain villains that you may or may not want, as well as, of course, utilizing your superhero. Some heroes are better than others, but those heroes probably are lower, uh, maybe lower on power, but have higher sidekick value. So you're going to be able to kind of mix and match those cards and play them. And so the strategy comes in what type of cards you want to have in your hand and when and how you want to utilize them. It's similar to a lot of those style take that card games with a couple unique twists involving math for little kids, as well as the idea of gathering cards and putting them into your tableau. So a good start on tableau management. It also has that little mystery aspect to it where you can choose to discard cards and it's still not going to be a hindrance because discarding cards in general can be good to gather cards that you you might want back into your hand and there's also an action that will just simply let you discard one card so there are ways to potentially clean up your hand even if you don't have all of the requirements. Now that being said, there are a couple negatives. One of them being is sometimes you have to discard a single card and your opponent might just have a much better hand than you, especially in a two player style game, in which case they're going to be getting better stuff and hopefully you'll be able to pull cards from the deck. There is obviously a bit of luck in the game because certain cards are better than others and based on whether you can pull them or not will determine whether or not you're going to win in a lot of cases, but it also comes down to how you choose to play them, what you choose to play them on, and that kind of thing. The artwork for the game reminds me of Saturday morning 90s style cartoons. You got a bunch of the different evil super villains. They're kind of cute and cartoony. I'd probably like to see a little bit more of that style artwork than just the random backgrounds as far as the cards go. I, I really like the style of those villains and superheroes. They're like 
I don't know. They're kind of interesting. They remind me of the game I just played not too long ago uh, the, with the superheroes. I can't remember. It was by Japan Anime Games. It's currently on Kickstarter as well. But they use the same little style standees as these guys. And these guys would probably make up uh, similar style heroes for that game as well. Tokyo Sidekick, that's it. They have that same kind of vibe, that feel of those older style cartoons. So let's see they're going to vibe with you or not. For me, they're just fine. They remind me. They're, they're more of a nostalgia factor than I would think they're like a really high quality artwork style factor. But regardless, that could could be something for you or not and of course the luck factor in the game is there as well as there is strategy involved in the game as to how you want to play the cards and where you want to play them and gathering your tableau which is nice most of the games i've reviewed that are just straight up take that style of card games pretty simple draw a card play a card go back and forth until somebody wins from some erroneous condition and those games can be fine as well depending on if that's the type of game that's for you but this one brings a little bit more to the table while still letting it be for younger kids younger kids can easily play this game will understand it it gives them that set set collection aspect gives them tableau management they still have that take that and that luck draw factor like a game with uno and whatnot and then it has that 90s style cartoon so regardless what do you think about this game is this something you'd want to pick up let me know down below in the description if you want to pick up cardtropolis currently on kick starter you can go ahead and hit the link in the description where you can go and pick up the game for yourself see what other stuff that might be in the game that i haven't discussed about for the most part that pretty much explains the entire game look forward to hearing what you have in the comment section outro time all right guys thanks for watching another unfiltered gamer card game review for the game card tropolis like i said before if you're interested in the game take a look down below link in the description it's one of those games where you definitely want to play more than one game in a row and with the same style of people so you get an idea of how the game flows and understand because the games are rather rather quick and as you play them you're gonna be like oh that was you know you got all the good cards it's like yeah that's fine because you can just simply jump right back in and then the game can switch in style and feel it's really interesting how that works also check out website unfilteredgamer.com blog posts giveaways kickstarter lists and more don't forget to like comment and subscribe it does help the channel we do keep making content for you guys when we get that feeling of love that you guys send us even if the love is negative love i'm still down with that as well cool put it down below as well as check out our live streams every wednesday at 6 30 p.m pst on facebook we do live streams giveaways and play games just like this one there as well i'm excited to talk about our website that's gonna get redone as well as our discord and all that good stuff and just be part of that community to see what we are doing to make gaming even more fun for more people all right guys that's all i got for you this time and as always i look forward to capturing superheroes no super villains in cardtropolis with you next time.